Sense intelligence. Sensitivity is intelligence. With grace and skill, you have abundance. Welcome to the Psychic Hour. Host Kelly Briggle is a psychic medium, numerologist, healer, and teacher. Her passions are learning about the soul and energy. Whether through spirit, emotion, or vibrational numbers, there is always a pathway of information waiting to help. Now, here's your host of the Psychic Hour, Kelly Brickle. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Psychic Hour. I'm Kelly Brickle. This is the interview show, and we have the wonderful Lisa Williams on today, and we'll be talking with her in just a moment. Um, we always dive into the topic of the day, and it just gets the energy flowing and going. So welcome, everybody coming on in. Um, you will have a chance throughout the show if you want to pop down comments or share your thoughts. And we're just going to be taking questions um, as they come and um, also just naturally talking with what uh, Lisa and I touch on with her journey, um, her life with psychic mediumship, uh, what she has in the works, like classes. She has some exciting things coming up everybody can be a part of and just really going with that. So hello, everybody coming on in. Hello, Keith. Hello, Maddie. Hello, Khaleesi Salisi. Salisi, I like that name. Um, hello, 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 Sharon. And we'll be continuing to say hello as everybody comes on in. It's great to see you. Hi, Tim. Hi, Ramona. So the topic of the day is going to be focused on healing and restoration. And it's so important to return back to this understanding and this vibration of what it means to heal ourselves and be in a place where we find ourselves returning back to balance, returning back to a strength that when we get overwhelmed, when there's too much going on, you could have, let's say, a thousand pings around you from people, from projects, from family, from life, from just whatever is on your plate. Um, you will find that your energy gets overwhelmed. It's so natural to do that. And what happens when we do get overwhelmed? Do we have things ready to go to restore ourselves? Is it an ongoing process? And for some of you, you might say, yeah, I have a self-healing care regimen. Some of you are like, yo, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm in classes to learn about myself to answer that question. Um, whatever it may be, it's important to understand that it's time to put attention on yourself in a new way. So we could have a thousand self-care healing techniques, but from year to year, they're going to change. And I talk about that a lot. You know, our energy is always changing, so our regimens have to change and our understanding of ourselves has to change. There's new areas opening up, whether they're truly new, where we go, wow, I've never experienced that in life before, or whether like the past is being exhumed, right? Where we go, oh, I remember this. I thought this was over, right? And we we pull things up from the past and we go, that needs to be healed. Whoa, that is just pulling at me and making me do weird things. So whether it is new or old or just the typical of how am I spinning myself out again, um, we need to call back. To ourselves. And it's really important. So I'm a big fan of community and I'm a big fan of um, being cognizant of how we share our energy. And it's important to have our alone time. It's important to have time to step away because I believe as humans, we are constantly sharing energy. Like it is built within our makeup to share and receive and become and collaborate. And synergy is just natural. It's like how the universe expresses itself. That's my belief. So, you know, 
those of us who are sensitive, we're constantly aware of all these little ingredients that we're picking up or sensations or thoughts, emotions. And we go, well, yeah, that's just a part of how life works. So the more sensitive we become, the more we pick up consciously and the more we do have to step away at times. Some people need very brief steps away. Some people will joke about it and, you know, like, okay, I'm going to go be a month for a monk for a month. Um, and just depending on what it is, it's kind of the concept of, it is the concept of return back to yourself, you know, know thyself um, because we have to strip away what doesn't work. And sometimes there's all these lovely people within our lives and there's all these lovely things happening, but we have to strip away and go back to the simplicity of what simply works for ourselves. And the good friends and the good people in our life will allow us pause and break. And there is natural appreciation of the sharing of energy. It just doesn't have to be all the time. Um, and the things that are meant for us take time. Um, sometimes to percolate, or the things that are meant for us take time um, to just allow us to be when things are right for us. So, you know, if something's right for you, you can't miss it. And if you are healed and restored and you're grounded while you are doing it, oh my goodness, you're going to go get it. You really are. Um, so, I'm reading some of the comments and people are talking about like, yes, rest, relax, and they're working on it right now. Um, and I love it. Bonnie says, I make art to balance out. And yes, yeah, some of these things to balance when we return to ourselves, it's activating these parts of our energy that are just so natural and beautiful and make us feel alive, where we're not distracted by the other things around us so much, but we can, you know, focus on opening up our energy focus on being ourself um, and just naturally being without all the busyness. So uh, Bonnie was talking about arts. Um, some people write. I know I cook. Uh, I write. That helps me. Sometimes it gets my mind a little busy to write. Like I, I find that I get so many ideas that writing for me isn't always my piece. Sometimes it is. But for cooking, it's almost like as long as it's not too busy around me, I get in the zone and I just start creating. I start thinking of flavors. I start thinking of ideas. I start thinking about how to balance the food, you know, feeling when to take the, the, the pan on and off the burner. It's like this whole kind of dance where I get to just relax. Or sometimes when I go to the grocery store, I'll just walk around and I'll think, what does my body need? Or what would I like to make? Or what goes together? What's new? So food for me is a great balancer and a grounder. And I like being alone with food, even though socially I will create for people. And I, that makes me very happy too. But that's how I return to getting into the zone and finding my power. Um, so there's quiet relaxation and restoration. And sometimes there's active, like riding a bike or going for a walk. Walking is very important for me. So it's the normal things sometimes of wellness, but then what are the things that are so unique to you that other people just don't get? So not everyone loves cooking. That's one of the things that some people just don't get. Not everybody loves cooking. Um, it could be the art. Not everybody loves to draw. Um, some people they will tinker around in their workshop, right? They'll build things, they'll whittle things, they will um, work on cars, restoration with cars, restoration of self through sometimes the inspiration of restoring other things. Um, it doesn't have to matter what it is as long as you go, yes, I'm activating a part of my spirit, I'm activating remembrance. And that grounds our energy and it settles our energy. It expands and grounds at the same time where we are centered. Sometimes we don't need more grounding. Sometimes we don't need more spiritual expansion. We just need to be centered and everybody has a different combination of what it means to be centered. So it's like, who are you really? What do you really want amongst the chaos of life? What is the authenticity of you? And you need to pull away from people and things to find it. You can be inspired by, you can be led by, you can be, um, you know, guided in a certain way of being. And it 
but ultimately it reminds you, yeah, I want more of this. And you want more of that for a reason, because that's the real you. You want more of something that another person inspires because it goes, oh yeah, I remember that. Or "Mm -hmm, that's the next step. And because it's all you. So who do you want to be? How do you want to live? And one of the most beautiful ways to do that is to get back to the simplicity of who you are and you need to connect. You need to connect and you need to get centered. So with that said, to center the energy and to help set the stage, um, we're going to bring in Lisa in just a second here. So everybody, please give her a warm welcome. And um, I love the comments. Yes, everybody is in touch with learning about how to center and grow and expand. So thank you for joining the conversation with me. So let's bring on Lisa. Pull her in right now. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lisa. How it's great are to see you? you. I I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I was listening to that and I thought it's really important how you need to be in alignment. You need to be centered. You know, you can do all of this other stuff, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel centered for you. It's not right. I, I love what you're talking about. We find ourselves very topsy-turvy, even when we feel like I'm walking my path sometimes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'll oh, go ahead. No, 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 go for it. I'm just agreeing with like, you. Yeah, and a tornado can ensue sometimes when we're on our path and we go, why is everything getting kicked up? I'm on my path. Exactly, exactly. And you think you're on your path. And you know that whole saying that you have a plan and God laughs. Um, But it is, you're on your path. And I always say, well, sometimes we just have to, we're like a tree. Our roots are really deep into the ground. We just have to flow and wave and everything else. So I think that's important. Be a palm tree or willow where we yeah, don't break. Play, we don't break. play. We don't break. <laughs> you know, the body sometimes breaks, but the soul, I feel like it's just, it's so everlasting and so resilient. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. We're made to bend. Okay. I want to give you a warm introduction for everybody who does know Lisa or is learning about her for the first time. Lisa Williams is a world-renowned medium and clairvoyant with an incredible ability to communicate with those who have passed on the other side, bringing healing and hope to people from all around the world. She's an accomplished author of several books on mediumship and spirituality, including Survival of the Soul, Life Among the Dead, and Was That a Sign from Heaven, as well as Divine Wisdom. In addition to her own television show on Lifetime, Lisa has appeared on programs including Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Anderson Cooper 360, and The Oprah Winfrey Show. In 2013, she launched the Lisa Williams International School of Spiritual Development, committed to delivering world-class spiritual learning opportunities with her unique hands-on method of teaching. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Kelly. (laughs) So many accomplishments. Someone mentions the Kardashians. (laughs) <laughs> you know, again, it's like you, you said it, the way it appears and you're walking your path and sometimes you're like, I'm here. This is a part of the path. Didn't expect that. Yeah, I know. I didn't expect the Kardashians. I remember that day. It was crazy. Yeah. It's exposure to spirituality, though. Like sometimes it's about, you know, letting people know what spirituality can look like and being a voice for that. And you very much are. Thanks. Yeah, it's, you know, I think I think I'm all about an advocate for letting people understand what is their gift, what is their unique, special uh, space. And so, you know, I think it all has to be embraced. Spirituality means something different to everybody. And uh, I think there's a, a specialness about it that we have to find in ourselves. It's really important. And I'm all about let me help you embrace that and see where it goes. Yes. And it humbles us because we're all human, whether we are uh, in a mansion or we're in a hut, Mm -hmm. we're all trying to figure it out. And we all want that guidance when we feel lost and confused and overwhelmed. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. We all want it. Even, even as psychics and mediums, we want it. We want, we need a little bit of help. We need a little bit of guidance. We need some 
and there's Max jumping and barking in the background. But yeah, we need a little bit of help and guidance in the, you know, no matter who we are, you know, we're only human. And I think that's important to recognize as well. How have you cultivated the balance within your life with helping so many people hold space as well as going, yikes, um, I need someone to hold space for me? So that's actually a really good question. Um, one of the good things is I'm really good at holding space. I love holding space for other, other people, but I'm very cautious about who comes into my space. And so what I've done is I've actually tightened my circle of friends. And I think it's it's important to realize that it's great to have people that you like and you play with and you have some fun with and da, da, da. But I've really, really made my circle of friends go, whoosh, you know, really, really tight. And it's these people that I can go, yes, I can hold space for you. Yes, I trust you. Yes, I'm there for you. But I also know when to say, I'm having a really crazy day. I'm having a tough day. This didn't go right. Give me your advice. And I think it's really about putting boundaries up because naturally in this world, you probably know it is, you might not be feeling well, you might say it and somebody like, I'm not going to let me send you energy. And I love that. And I, I think that. it's really, really amazing and, and everything else. But sometimes I just want to wallow in my stuff. Sometimes I just want to have a day in bed. Sometimes I just want to go, thanks for your energy. I just want to wallow with my dog, you know? And so it's really about creating that boundary and knowing knowing that this is, this is okay for, for you to feel like that. Yeah. Um, managing our sensitivities on a yep. level where it works for us. It's good to wallow because I think it makes us better at reading other people. Honestly, to know our stuff, we have to go, this is what's in me. Yeah. So you're familiar to go, oh my gosh, you're dealing with that too. Or, oh my, or, oh my goodness. But also too, as well with the sensitivity part, how have you learned to, I guess, find your tribe, find your group? Because being as, um, I'll say the word sensitive and intuitive, um, you know, you sometimes need a finer um, connection of someone showing up for you, a more mm -hmm. refined connection or version of that. So, I, you know, a lot of people say to me, how do I do that? How do I find my, my tribe? And quite honestly, how I like to look at it is actions speak louder than words. People will talk all the time and they'll t they say things and they will, you know, and I've got friends of mine who hold on to everybody. Well, you said this and you said that. I don't care about what anyone says. I'm like, show up. When you show up, then I'm going to see who you are. And that's what I look for is I look for people who show up. And um, I think in my world, my world, it's really important for me to actually just um, watch. And, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll just slowly let people in slowly. And it's I think it's important to just allow people just to people want to help you people want to be there for you so it's like let them show you let them show how they're going to be their true authentic self and it's like dating all right it's like dating let's go back to our dating days you know someone shows up and they're they're all great and then you know you get past the honeymoon period of three months and then suddenly you got these irritations that come out and you're like mm. And so everybody has that honeymoon period. And so I'm just like, let me just open that door up and let me just see what they're like. So that's how I, how, how I look at it. Do you believe that time tells everything? Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. hundred percent. You know, and I think time is really good because what it does is it gives us that moment of comfort. It gives us that, that time of space and it gives us that moment of just looking and seeing and feeling we can go on a gut instinct listen you know my husband works on a gut instinct all the time I don't like that person I'm like why 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 and I get all like pissy because he gets all well I don't like them and he trusts them he trusts his instincts and he's like well you're the psychic and I'm like I gotta let that vibe I'm not quite sure and so but he's like nope I don't like it no 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 but he will also be open to say, I don't like that, but they are good at this. So there's a there's a 
opportunity there. So it, it's just interesting, but I do think time tells for sure. It heals time well. Time tells and it heals. And um, speaking of like changing and healing, um, within your work, that's something that you've been focusing on a lot, I've noticed, um, healing, whether it's trans healing or uh, different modalities um, with teaching people about that. How have you integrated healing more um, into your work and in your personal life recently? So I don't think it's just a recent thing. I think it's been along, along the whole thing, you know, um, for ever since I started, and I've been working professionally as a psychic medium, as in this is my full time job for the last 24 years. So this is a this is my full time job. And I've been working from it from then. And when I first started, I was never called a psychic medium. I was called a lifestyle counselor. So I did everything from you know, coaching before it became the thing, you know, coaching in the spiritual world, um, looking at healing. I did a lot of crystal healing. I did a lot of healing clients. And so really throughout my whole work, I've really been involved in it. And I also look at myself and, and I think the healing, as much as I want to help people, and I always say to my students, you're your work is more than, I want to help people. It's more than that. You know, it's got to give you what's the why behind the why. And so when I look at what my why is, why I want to do the work as a psychic medium, it's got to heal me in some capacity. And so when I look at it healing me and I look at what it's trying to do for me, it's on a very personal level. And then when I bring it out into the world, because everything I've worked on for me, I then bring out to the world. I think it's so powerful because I've seen the transformation. I've, you know, I've gone through my own healing journey. I've gone through a journey with my own animal. There's my dog. I've gone through a whole um, healing journey with my husband. And so I want to bring all of that out to help people because it's through trial and error. And I feel that people are looking for a lot more deeper healing now rather than I'm speak and I, I do this because it's like scratching the surface. I'm speaking to your mom. She's got blue eyes, blonde hair. She had one leg, two thumbs, you know, whatever it might be. And there's a deeper element. So your mom is in spirit. But let me let me see how we can close the gap. How can we heal that wound? How can we give you that emotion? How can we help you communicate with your mom? So I think there's healing on so many different facets that we just have to tap into. Absolutely. Um, I mean, just as a reader, because you do so much with teaching people and developing mm -hmm. people within your school, um, there's a lot of times where it has nothing to do with their abilities. It's just they are so anxious or they have so much emotion pouring out that they can't ground the energy and sometimes yeah. they need the healing and they need to go deeper within a different type of energy to unleash their mediumship or unleash their psychic power. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because I say to a lot of my students, you know, you're always going to heal something in you and there's always going to be that big boom situation that is going to be life-changing and it could be an operation it could be an accident it could be in death in the family something's going to break that open to give you that aha moment of i am being more um intuitive i'm more sensitive i'm more aware i'm more empathic i'm more this i'm more that and so sadly it does happen but in that place what we're doing is we're opening ourselves up into opportunities and it can be very scary whenever we embark on a new situation in our life it can be super super scary and so what we also have to recognize is that even though it's scary play with it don't fear it just play with the emotion play with the sensitivity play with how it vibes for you and play with your gift because everybody's got a gift everybody has got a gift and it's really about playing and covering discovering feeling experiencing what it is and how it works for you whether it is psychic medium healing crystal sound i don't know whatever it is is there for you and definitely working with healing brings us back to who we are so we can actually be with yeah. our gift yeah yeah, because I know when I'm overwhelmed or when other people are just really going through it, 
they're just white knuckling life and they're looking down or they're looking straight ahead and they're not, oh, well, there's a sign and I just met that person and that goes together and that's an opportunity right there. Like they can't see the bigger picture because it's just, there's too much stress. There's too much, you know, resistance by just coping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, and there is so much resistance by coping. And I think what we do, and certainly in the work that I've, I've been studying is we get into that on a white knuckle ride, fear, we get into fight, flight, fright, freeze moment and the amygdala gets triggered and we just we just don't know how to operate and what we actually have to do is we have to go directly into our internal self into our alignment what is an alignment but in that moment of that fear or that fright or that space of like being triggered we can't get into that internal moment so the one thing that I always say to people is get into that breath go into the alignment. Your body is your absolute pendulum for anything. Your body is the internal gauge, your barometer for your own um, intuition. And when you're in your own gut, in the space of feeling your own body, feeling what it needs, where do you need to go? What vibe do you, should you go here? Should you go there? It's when that instinct happens, you're like, oh, I don't want to go there. We have to listen because your body's the gauge of the intuition that we are trying to access. And that's all it is. So when you're you're in that fear, that frozen moment, listen to this and breathe. Yes. I mean, our spirit is being housed with our, our body, our physical vessel, mm -hmm. and we are in a physical world. So to be intuitive, we have to take care of ourselves. And you're, you're, you're talking about, there's just all this stuff that goes on in the body that we really, a lot of times have been taught to ignore. Yeah, we have, because we've been, we've been conditioned as we've been going through life. No, 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 no. Don't touch. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't listen. Don't feel, you know, we've been, we've been, um, have opinions on us. We should listen to this. This is what's right. This is not right. This is where this, 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 this. And honestly, it's really important for us to find what really feels right for us. What is aligned for us, especially right now in today's society when everything is kicking off, you know, we're all, we're almost in this place of gripped in that space of fear and what is it that's happening and truly we have to go back into our own self our own alignment and act upon where we feel is right and you know it's it's so interesting how a lot of people just don't they don't listen to their own internal barometer and they they're driven by all the opinions of everything else and what what their conditions were as they were grown up as a child as well so we, we always act and react on our childhood wounds. And that's how I always look at it. Like reacting to the state of the world or reacting based on what's going on within the community, like with people's yeah. perspectives and really not cultivating at the same time our inner worlds. We just go, well, I guess I'm supposed to react right like that. Or I guess I just do act react like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like friends of mine come to me and that, you know, they'll pick up their phone. And they'll be like, Oh my God, can you believe that they said this? And I'm like, well, how are they saying it? And it's a text message. Well, and I'm like, how about if they say it like this? Da, 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 da. And they're like, Oh, well that changes everything. But <laughs> And what it does is they are looking at it and they're acting out on their fears. So I always say to people, act and react. Based, you're going to act and react based, based upon your triggers, your wounds, your trauma, whatever it is. But what I always then say is leave it. Leave that comment. Look at it when you're in a different mood. Look at it when you're in a different mood and see how it fits. Or how about pick up the phone if it's someone close to you and go, hey, can we talk about this comment that you just had? Because there's a lot of people that just assume and they don't find out directly from the horse's mouth. And that's one of the things that I think needs to happen. We act on our wounds a lot. I mean, we all have them. And yeah, that's why texting scares me sometimes. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. There's been a lot of interesting happenings just from texting. Yeah. And you know, it's... And I think that's where people get 
so confused and there's a lot of assumptions. So I really do try to, I, I'm turning and looking at my bookshelf because I really do try to work on this book, The Four Agreements, okay? Mm, yes. so the the yes. Four Agreements are so powerful and it's like, you know, The Four Agreements are just one of the books that I just uh, adore and it is being impeccable with your word, first of all, and then we, then we look at, at don't take anything personally, we look at don't make assumptions and always do your best. So when we look at these, these Four Agreements, and of course he's got a Fifth Agreement now, what we have to do is we have to really live by this. So I think when I'm impeccable with my word, which means one, I'm impeccable with my word for myself. I don't give myself a little white lie or I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm honest with myself. I don't have the negative talk to my, that's one thing I don't do is the negative talk. Um, and I think, I think it's very important that we, when we try to step in and to be Listen, I'm a spiritual teacher, so I'm more under the microscope than most because, you know, they look at how, what I say, how I say it, how I speak, da, 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 da. People don't care whether I turn up with makeup on. They care about what comes out my mouth. And so for me, it is about being impeccable with my word, and I try to stand by that. And so, you know, if we're in our authentic alignment, then guess what? Everything else just works. Mm-hmm. And so being in alignment, parts of us are naturally just, okay, I can function, I can go, I can get through this. And then there's times where we just hit a brick wall. So in the comments, someone was talking about, yep, I'm still going through the dark night of the soul and I feel that I'm at the end of it. But Good. for people who are transforming, and this is Scorpio season, we've just entered it. It's all mm -hmm. about transformation and the mucky stuff, right? Yeah. Um, what are what do you um, hope for people who are in the dark night of their soul or they are just getting into that next phase of learning what they are all, all about? So I think, you know, the dark night of the soul is really important, okay? First of all, let's have some recognition for where you are and where you've come and what's gotten you to this point. And you have to have, because the dark night of the soul, we've all had it, okay? I've been lying on the floor, crying, rocking, you know, screaming, shouting. The dark night of the soul is really a tough place to be. But when we have gratitude for where it is, and I am going to say, if you're going through the dark night of the soul, everything is going to get easier. But what we have to do is realize that things can only get better. And it's taken us to this moment to get to that point, And then we transition out of it. So when we're moving through this dark night of the soul, what we're doing is we're going, okay, that was tough. I'm strong. I'm resilient. I can do it. I have, I'm courageous. I have all of these abilities that now suddenly I'm lifting myself up. And then if you're on this, the you're coming out of that dark night of the soul, what you actually have got is a blank slate. You've got this clean slate and you can choose anything. And often what's happened is getting into that dark night of the soul is expectations, pressure. It is what should be, could be, would be, all of that stuff. And it really is the opportunity to then look at this, where am I going? And it is this absolute beautiful window of opportunity where we can, it, it can be the gift that will just give to you forever and could also be the gift that gives to other people too. Because some people like me, whenever I go through my dark night of the soul, it's the opportunity for me to come out and say, now, let me help you find your way because, and, and, and then it's, it's amazing. It really is. Yeah. So anyone who's going through it, hang on in there, hold on. The ride is going to slow down. Exactly. It's a very important time. Um, so that's what I was going to ask next. How do you hang on for the people who are enduring right now? What do you recommend? What do you encourage while they're hanging on? A support system. A support system and faith. Now, a lot of people are going to be looking at it and going, I don't have faith, whether it, I don't have 
faith in God. I don't have faith in people. I don't have whatever. But you have the faith in, within you, your internal system. Find a spiritual practice, whether that is everything from reading the Bible or reading meditations or affirmation or getting up and just showering, getting up and just having a shower. We have to find that spiritual practice, whether it is you going into that place of um, just, I don't know, getting into that place of just, I've got to go. This is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to walk my dogs. This is what I'm going to eat. I'm going to drink water. I'm going to open the opportunities up. You've got to hold on and take your spiritual practice. And sometimes it is moment by moment, not even day by day. It is moment by moment that you have to just go, I'm just going to do it. But find support, do a spiritual practice, read and then sit and breathe, breathe, walk, anything. Well, depending on what, what works for you, find what is good for you to get through it. You got to you gotta find that next step, that next way. And I know, so yes, healing has been in your life for a long time. Um, I have been blessed to have met you about like 11 years ago. I have to kind of do the math, but I remember one of the first conversations um, that you were kind of, it was like a group conversation, but mm -hmm. one of the first conversations I, I heard of you being connected to healing, you were talking about um, doing hands-on healing. And yeah. that was something that you would frequent. Um, it's, it's not something new. You, you know, people know you as a psychic medium, um, as a teacher, author, but this has been a part of your life for a very, very long time. And so yeah. Where did you first learn about healing? And also, I want to ask you, so I'll follow up with you. How does it feel when you tap into that energy? Oh, my gosh. It's it's like, it's amazing. And so um, I first learned about healing. Oh, my God. I'm really going to go way back. God, Kelly, you just unlocked something in me. Oh, my gosh. It just totally unlocked. So the first time I heard about any form of healing I went to a church service and it was a very, I mean, when I say church service, I'm talking, this was a highly, highly religious thing. Okay. And it was so crazy that I was watching people do faith healing. And I'm like, what? These people are coming out walking. No, seriously. Uh, what? Anyway. It was insane. And I was like, if that can happen, I want to do that. I never forget that moment. And I must have been 12, must have been about 12. I was on vacation with my pet, my grandparents, and we used to have this place where it's called the Sunshine Club. And they used to bring all of the kids from, from their, you know, part of their church. And I remember they, I used to play with the kids and we used to go down to the church. And then I remember one day they said, you know, if you want to find Jesus or you want to find God, whatever it was, put your hand up. And I found my hand rising. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, let's do it, right? <laughs> anyway. So, you know, I said this prayer, blah, blah, blah. And it felt all of a sudden this wholeness within me. It was so random. And then I remember looking at my hands and going, you know, always realizing my hands were really hot and I couldn't understand it. And my grandmother, you know, would sit there and I would place my hands and she's like, your hands are really hot, Lisa. So I was like, okay. And then my grandmother on my other side, my psychic grandmother, Ah. was telling me about how her healers would come. And I'm like, what? What are healers? And it was all very weird, all very weird. And then I started to uncover, I started to go to spiritualist churches and everything else. And I realized that I could heal. And I remember yeah. putting my hand on somebody's mouth. And it was one of those embarrassing times where I walked into someone's house her mom was there and I just went up to her and I went, how are you feeling? And I, oh, I literally did this and I'm like, why am I touching this woman's face? <laughs> right? Why? So, I mean, it's, it's bizarre. She said to me, it was so funny because she, a couple of days later, she said, Lisa, you touched my face 
and I had chronic uh, uh, to toothache and I could not get an appointment for two weeks to the doctors. She said, you place your hand on my face and we within seconds that pain went and I went, oh my God. And it scared me. It scared me. But that's what started my kind of journey into the healing realm and I looked at Reiki I looked at crystals I looked at sound and I kind of played played in space and that's what I did yeah when you just held her face it was like you were moved like just to move your hand when you were like okay sure I'll try yeah. it you found yourself in these situations where you didn't know until later, right? No, I had no idea. I mean, I had, I mean, yes, I was doing psychic mediumship. I've been doing that for a long time, but I didn't really. So here's the, other, for the funny thing, Kelly, is I actually only wanted to ever be it, was a healer. And all of a sudden my psychic, my psychic stuff developed, my mediumship developed, and then I was forcing my healing. <laughs> I was forcing it like I need to do Reiki and I need to do this and I need to do that. And, da, 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 da. and then I'm thinking, why? Just play with it. And so I think it's really only in the like, I want to say maybe the last 10 years that I've really started to play with it. And I never forget, my, the first, this is actually a funny story. My husband, my skeptical husband, okay, big big American soldier. I was going to say big something, but big soldier, <laughs> six foot five, big guy. And he does not believe a thing. He's like, whatever, Lisa. He does, he does not believe whatever, you know? And it was our first night that we'd spent together. Okay. And the following morning he was like throwing up and he was in the bathroom and he was like, Ugh. and this is not the way you want to spend the first morning that you've spent with this person. Right. So I just said, listen, I know you don't believe in my stuff, but can you let me do my thing? And he went, oh, grumbled under him. And I placed my hands on him and I sent this energy. And within seconds, he was sleeping like a baby. And I just left my hands there and I, I, I knew the energy would go wherever it needed to go. He woke up two hours later, as right as rain, like, right, let's go. And I went, what happened to you? He went you happened to me. He said, I don't Ooh. believe in this stuff, but I believe in that. He said, I don't know what you did, but thank you. And that was it. So that was a funny story. <laughs> I believe in that, you know, you don't have to believe in it, but if somebody you trust and love enough shows yeah. you that it's possible, you go, you know what? It exists. Yeah. It exists. Yeah. I know. And then we went and ate pizza. So he was fine. <laughs> you would have to be right from stomachache to cheese and all that stuff. <laughs> oh, it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like for you when you're healing? I know it can feel very different depending on what you're doing or where you're at within your life, but what does it feel like for you? So it depends on what type of healing I'm doing and it depends on what uh, the t what the person has got, what ailments they got. Now, I, you know, listen, it's great if you've got a headache, fine. All right. I'm not your healer for that. I'm not. Give me a real, I, I work with, I work with um, terminal illnesses and I work with deep healing stories. Okay. So I work with situations where we're talking ALS, we're talking cancer, we're talking major PTSD, we're talking big, 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 stuff. And so it depends on what I'm doing. So with my clients, what I like to do is I like to take them through. I'm, I'm the guide. I'm their navigator. I just navigate their journey through their own transformation. So first of all, I do a deep dive into their own, their own soul. Okay. With their permission. And I'm like, okay, there was trauma here. There was trauma there. I, I start looking at it and then I feel it. I vibe with it. So I, I w use a lot of my intuition. And I think this is the thing where a lot of people say, you know, how do you become a healer? The greatest thing is your intuition. Okay. It's the greatest thing. It's going to guide you. So I listen to the intuition and I allow it to guide me. And then when I'm pulling, um, I do all my healing remotely. 
And there's the reason why I do my healing remotely is because when I'm working with you, you need to be deeper into that space of you. I don't want to be saying things that make you go into your head, that makes you go, oh, so I want to dive deep. So I'll get you into a meditative state. We'll start journaling. We, we start we start healing. We start clearing. We start doing that stuff. But when I'm working remotely is I want my client asleep. I want them asleep. I want them um I don't want them awake. I don't want them thinking, can I feel anything? What's going on? I'm right. not doing it. All right. So I want to make sure I know when they're sleeping. And I will then, and I do a lot of my healing outside. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So I use the earth's energy and I bring it up. And I, it's like I imagine what I do is I, I is I straighten threads so it's like everybody's got energy strands so i straighten the threads that uh may need to be straightened all right to allow the energy flow first of all and then as i'm working with that with the energy it's like i can create a ball and grids very very quickly and so i'm working with them and it's like i hold them in my hands and the energy is like pulsating it's, vroom, vroom, vroom. it's like this it's so intense and people must look at me on my porch going, what is she doing? What, what is she doing? Anyway, but I'm sitting there and I'm doing all of this stuff and I'm like moving it around. And then I use sacred breath as well. So once I'm done, I, I then clear it off. But it's so powerful. So for me, my body feels, eh, I'm fine. But here in my hands, it's like. <laughs> and people have watched me do my healing. And they said, it's like you've got green or blue or orange coming off and my husband just goes okay off you go and he, he he watches me and he's like I don't know what you're doing but it's really weird but it's kind of cool <laughs> well, he can feel I would imagine by now you know the quality coming off your hands he's like I don't know what that is but it's something well it's funny because I do it to the George okay so my dog and you know, I'm. I w we were sitting and talking the other day, and George was right by me. And George is old; he's fourteen. You know, he's fourteen, and he's a pit bull. So, I mean, he's an old boy. And I placed my hands on him underneath his belly, and Chris went, "I know what you're doing right now." And I went, "What?" And he said, "He said I just know." Anyway, so every time I moved my hand to stroke George, all right, there was this. He's wagging of his tail. He was going, and then all of a sudden, I when I would channel the energy in, he would stop. Even though he knew my hand was there, he would just stop. It was like he was receiving. And it's so insane how my dog just picks up on it. And I swear to you, Kelly, this dog came to me when he was six and he was riddled with cancer, riddled with cancer, you know? And the, do the doctor, listen, I was gonna pay him, pay the doctor so much money, vet so much money to actually keep him alive. And it was so interesting how, um, they said, no, he's not going to survive. Chris, we were all getting ready for him to go. And honestly, he's still with us now at 14. And I swear it's because of the energy. It's amazing. Yeah. I wholeheartedly believe that. I mean, yeah. uh, cancer and, and healing and hands-on healing and energy work, uh, there is history of and documented history of things being dissolved things changing, uh, the body actually can completely heal in some cases with people who specialize in these departments. Yes. Yes. And it's actually, so, so what we, what I tend to work on is I tend to work on running the energy. So energy is electricity. Our body is energetic. It's voltage. And if ever we look at, so I do, a, I'm, I do a lot in the quantum, quantum area. So I am all about, um, different different types of healing and how we activate the quantum energy. And so what I'm doing is I am all I'm doing. So we've got electromagnetic and then we've got scalar energy, uh, which is zero point energy, scalar energy, chi, whatever you want to talk about it. Nikola Tesla talks about it. Einstein talks about it. The Buddhists, we all talk about this energy, but no one knows what it is. And we can get into that space. So I actually want to pull most people into this and send as much different energy through, which is actually why I bring the energy up from, I bring it up from, down from the universe, but I bring a lot of it up from the earth. And so what I think is very important here is that we utilize on what the body needs. And so there, I mean, 
it's it's insane what we do. And so when I've actually been working with my clients, I've had, and I will say this, one of my greatest clients actually came to me when I was when she was 23 um, with stage four ovarian cancer and the doctor had written her off. And I went, okay, we're going to, her name was Melanie. And I said, right, we're going to work with you. And um, she went through this and it was so crazy where the doctor literally said to her, I don't know what you've been doing, but what have you been doing this? So this, this tumor had, had gone from like the size of whatever to the size of her little fingernail. Wow. And it was unbelievable. She was just about to have surgery and her doctor came in and said, you can only have close friends and family in. And she said, well, this is my healer. And he said, no. And he was like, so, and that's when she, he, she told him why, how she got gotten to that point. And I was the first healer that had been, was allowed into that hospital. And that was 25 years ago in the UK. And it was unbelievable. And so now, obviously, in, in the UK, a lot of people have Reiki and they allow healers in and they have Reiki on staff. But it's so interesting how the doctor's minds are changing around from this. Um, and I work a lot, you know, with quantum energy. People are now creating healing retreats. Um, you know, I'm working with a lady who has who has been written off by the doctors and her cancer has, has reduced by 40 percent just by doing simple techniques and tricks and working with me and other things it's not just me but her mindset as well and it really does change everything what we're trying to do is rechange and, and rewire neural pathways that stop the body staying in that space of i'm gonna die to let me have hope and it changes everything changes everything and so in the comments Charmaine is talking about sometimes when she's just speaking and talking with with clients that there's a denseness that raises off mm -hmm. that she can feel that it's palpable so whether it's like internal people going through you know more terminal and serious um diseases or or just releasing emotional or mental energy so is it all about just moving energy? So I think it's it's really about, so I find dis-ease. A dis-ease is often unresolved issues that have come up in our life that we need to resolve. And so what my, my aim is, is when I do a deep dive into the soul, we all have a light, a soul contract. So this is going really deep here. Uh, and this is, it, it's insane. So I do a deep dive into the soul. Our soul contract, it says, you know, you should marry there, here, and you're going to marry this, and da -da, you're going to divorce here, and you're going to have this, and this is what's going to happen. Da -da -da. So our life is planned out, okay? And what tends to happen is just because our soul has gone through these experiences to enrich our, our experience of life. So our soul has experiences that enriches our life okay now i'm going to look at some of my experience i'm going to say they did not enrich my life but, <laughs> on the right, conscious level it. on the conscious level no way <laughs> I know. I'm like, whatever. but then our brain recognizes trauma you know i was hurt this happened to me this was abusive da, 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 da. so our brain recognizes a trauma and our soul and our brain are two operating systems that really don't like each other, okay? And so if we took at it this way, our soul is trying to say, hey, I can ho help you. The brain's going, screw you, I'm keeping you safe. So they're two operating systems that can actually work against each other. So when we recognize the deep dive of the soul and understand what the soul contract is, that's great. Our brain then goes, oh, okay, uh, I'll be open to you. All right, so what we have to do then is start retraining the brain. We then have to do a deep dive into what our trauma has led us to. So then it's going back into and healing these wounds, okay? And so a lot of coaching comes in. And that's when I do a lot of visualizations. I do a lot, a lot of past life regressions, a lot of regressions, a lot of let's, let's really heal this energy, working with crystals. And so what we're doing is then if they're struggling to lift that energy, I'm here to help them. I'm here to lift it up. I'm here to, I'm here to, actually help and then what we then do is if somebody is like I, they can't do it themselves they're too weak they're struggling whatever it might be what my aim is is to go in and try to 
as you're <laughs> trying to get up. <laughs> what aim is is trying to get in and maybe pull the the tumor that is is there at hi is that what i did with you but it's like thank you yes tumor away and like i'll pull it into like i'll pull it into an, a capsule in their body and that's when i'll get the client to pull this out of their own body because i'm not here to to remove it because it's not my contract to remove it if they oh. want to move, it's not my oh, contract to move this that's smart. Yes. Exactly. Yes. You're, you're facilitating them removing it mm -hmm. because and right so then there. I'll guide them. Mm. And then I'll help heal that space that has got the scar tissue that's still, and then I'll work on the healing. So my energy, so my work is really, it's so varied and so very faceted that the healing, hands-on healing is only just, it's scratching at the surface because that happens in the moment. But I go dive deep into the soul. The soul is what tells us everything. The soul, our contract, and it's whether we can retrain the mind, which is why I studied neuroscience. When we can retrain our mind and we can get into the quantum and retrain it, and then our body listens, then guess what? Healing can happen because our body, our, our body, our skin is like six weeks old. It resheds itself and literally <laughs> sheds itself. The body heals itself. The body regenerates and cancer cells live in toxic environments. So what's in happening is our mind is creating toxicity because our mind is like fear, this abuse, da 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 and what we're doing is it's what one cell that just goes, I'm here to protect you. Pink. And it go, we go, oh. And I've, you know, and I haven't worked with this woman, but a friend of mine that I work with, she's been doing very, very similar stuff. And she had this woman fall in love with her cancer. She fell in love mm. with her cancer, fell in love with, with why it came. And she loved it all the way through that she, I mean, she, this woman, she had a very rare type of cancer fell in love with her cancer and went into remission wow. and it's amazing now listen i can't say i'm going to heal everybody because it might be in their life plan or contract to pass and so there's always a life contract and so there's elements of it and then we've also got there's another element where people say well why was my child born with cancer or born with this or born with that and again there's a deeper energy about it so when we start understanding the life contracts that go with it then we can understand the more bigger picture as well and it's a really tough place to be because our linear mind does not think this but our soul think our soul knows it and all in our linear mind is I just want to save. I just want to live. I just want this. I just want this. And what we're doing is we're holding on to an ideal in life, which is a very hard thing to do. And even I hold on. We all hold on to it. So I get a bit passionate about this, Kelly. You are passionate, but it's good. I mean, I think the mantra is within it. And let me know. Um, you have to lean into it. You have to, because, mm -hmm. you know, as a healer, you're like, I'm here. I'm here with it. I'm I'm guiding. I'm assisting. We're gonna move it. I I need your energy to to now move it too as well. Um, get acquainted with it. Learn. Sometimes we're gonna understand why it's here. Sometimes you know we don't know everything, but we have to get acquainted with why it's here to a certain yeah. degree. Yeah. Because what we're doing is we can't just say, "Oh, it's here now. Let me fix it." Yeah. Because that's putting a band-aid on something. That's why cancer right. keeps coming back and back and back and back and back. What we got to do is we've got to go, okay, I got to dive deep and find out what this is protecting me from, what it is, how am I going to help it? And a lot of people, and not truly, a lot of people will say, I'll say to people, this is not for the faint-hearted. I'm going to start rewiring your, your neural pathways. I'm really going to start diving deep into some things. And you, as much as you're doing the physical work and you're dealing with this difficult illness, I'm now going to put you in an emotional state where we're going to have to really uncover some stuff. And they're like, I don't want to do it. It's like going on a diet. You don't, you want to oh, lose yeah. weight. You eat, you eat shit, tons of Tootsie Rolls. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. You eat tons of Tootsie Rolls. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to start? Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Sure, it's just making me laugh now. Yeah, <laughs> they kind of go together. That's making me laugh anyway. So, <laughs> so well, someone Judy is talking about my reformer Pilates. My yeah, re, my reformer Pilates instructor is into neuroscience. She gives us the most complicated exercises to train our brain. It is so yeah. good, but yeah, it feels complicated or it feels like oh, like That's you're difficult. talking about. Yeah. And so actually, I love that she is um, doing these exercises because there are certain things that we can do. Um, you know, there are certain things that we can do. What we can do is we can actually get into that place of um, doing si certain exercises, retraining our brain. There are so many things that we can actually do to make sure that we're OK. We can take away stress. We can start planning. We can sleep more. Oh, my God. There are studies on sleep getting the, getting sleep eating right drinking water it, using your intuition and what honest truly 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 back in the pandemic i i um followed not only my csa group but i had probably about 50 60 uh, students psychic mediums who all went through actually no there was more of that it's probably about 100 i went through yeah all of these people to actually see um, stress management, hydration, exercise, all of this stuff. In fact, my ear has just gone, yes, because she was part of this. I literally studied everybody. They had to write down what their readings were like, what their healings were like. When they had got enough sleep, they'd eaten correctly. They'd gone through stress relief. They'd gone through the water. They'd exercised. They'd actually started to tap into alignment of themselves. And every single one of them their readings said that it was so much better when their neurological were in that when they were in that aligned space they'd done all the stuff that their brain needed then they were given the best readings of their life and so it is amazing i believe that it's so real i mean i my body is sensitive to food and sleep and all that and that's been something i've always learned to understand um, and it definitely makes an impact on me. Now, for other people, I really believe that that impact isn't so dramatic, but they're like, yes, it helps. Yes. And having that integration, no matter if it does affect readings, it will affect another area of life. Some people are just so grounded with the way that they read and how their body connects that they don't feel that huge offset in the reading department even though you're a hundred percent right on the money where it changes your energy, it just makes things easier. Mm -hmm. But let's say relationships suffer or um, friendship suffers or, uh, you know, other things like they just can't take on the load because um, yep. they're not balanced enough and That's they right. spin out eventually. Yeah, always. And you, you know, I, and I did it. And I, honestly, Kelly, I did it. I was that person and it put me into hospital. And because eventually you do spin out, eventually you can't cope. You can't keep going on the overdrive that you are on the way that you're overdriving. Like, oh, my God, I've got to drive this train. Da, 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 da. Because what you're doing is you're not listening. You're not intuiting. You're not vibing. You're not playing. And I think it's all about balance, you know. And I go back to your question, like, how do you keep how do you have your, you know, your inner circle and make sure you trust and all of those things. But it's about having balance. And it, you've got to play, you've got to have balance. You can't always be in the space of healing, you can't be in the space of, of being a psychic medium. It's not a party trick. You find something else that's a bloody party trick, you know, but it really is. It's about a, a state of balance. And so the body is that barometer. It's always going to, and you've got to trust it. you got to trust it. I want you to talk about some of the things that you have coming up. Um, but the final thing I do want to ask you is how has the next phase of you being a psychic medium and a healer and a teacher changed with this understanding of neuroscience and, and healing on a body level? Well, like, like beyond. So um, my journey with neuroscience started many years ago. 
um, when I wanted to understand the medium's brain. And then really over COVID, I think we all had that opportunity. We all had time to sort of learn. I, I dive deep. I'm um, just turning and looking at my certificate. Um, I dive deep into neuroscience. And, and then I found some courses and I went and studied and I did some things. And I started to read some books. And it also helped because my husband was deployed. So I didn't have that additional, you know, distraction. But it was it was amazing. And, and what it made me do is it made me realize the human brain. It made me understand the way that we we work with with um, energy. And what it really did is it brought everything together, it bridged the world between science and spirituality and that there is a balance between it. And so what we're doing is we're coming into this and that. I've realized that my teachings have absolutely exponentially changed, you know, to the point that I almost feel that I've done a disservice to the people that I trained 10 years ago to where I'm at now, because not that the information is different, it's more deeper. Um, well, it was very um, good 10 years ago, too. So I'm just saying, <laughs> I know I really loved it. It helps tremendously. Yeah. But you know what it did, Kelly, is it made me realize. Well, I was doing, I was teaching this way and I didn't understand why. And I just put it down to energy. All right. But I went, oh, now I went, oh, this is why, this is why, this is why, this is why, because of the brain. And I always knew there was a deeper thing. And so now what it's done is it's exponentially blown me out of the water. So I now, with my readings, it's so different. My psychic readings, my healings are so much different. Um, just everything has now gone on to a much more different level. It's like, and I think it's also the fact that I've matured too. Um, my wisdom has come in in such a deep, profound way that I'm not saying, you know, I'm wise or anything, but the wisdom, the ancient wisdom. <laughs> I'll say it for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. But I've tapped into ancient knowledge. I've tapped into ancient wisdom. I've tapped into the source of really, truly who I am and why I'm on this earth plane to really utilize the energy and work with the energy and really stepped into my ancient gifts that I've had for so long. But I used them to conform to society that the way they wanted me. And now I don't care. Now I'm like, listen, I can be as crazy as you want and I'm going to be crazy, but it actually works. <laughs> it actually works. That's the thing. You know, science might have to catch up or, or it already has yeah. in certain departments and we're just making it more vocal and known. But the truth is the truth and it all catches up. Yeah, And sure. this is a very authentic um, true place that you come from within healing, within psychic mediumship, within the teachings that you have at your core, it works. And now it's just being expressed on a more cerebral level. That's it. That's all it's done. And I think, you know, I think it's, it's very important for, listen, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I know that. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone's going to like me. I drop the F-bomb occasionally, or a little bit more occasionally. But, you know, a, a lot of things happen. But And I may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's really, all I'm here to do is give people hope and trust and to know that they have the ability to do it themselves. If I had my wish for everybody, my wish would be that everyone would know how to use their intuition. Everyone would know how to tap into their loved ones. Everyone would know how to tap into their own energy and their own life contract. And everyone would know how to heal themselves. So in an ideal world, I'm going to say this lovingly, I would be out of a job because that would mean I have done my job in teaching those people how to do all of those things. Because really, they're coming to me because they're doubting themselves. They're coming to me because they haven't quite learned how to do it. And my aim is, is to make sure that I teach them how to do it. So they've got the tools to do it themselves. And she's really good at that. You know, uh, she's helped to do that with me. So thank you for everything that you have done, Lisa, to help me uh, spread my wings. She's very, very good, everybody. Uh, she's a wonderful teacher. I. Uh, what are some of the ways that people can find and be a part of what you have going on this month. I know in November you have the healing retreat in Sedona. 
as well. Yeah, women. so I've got a healing retreat in Sedona. Um, I am going to say that this is, you know, going to be really powerful. So if there's something that anyone's working through, that dark night of the soul or whatever, I am really going to say to you, that is probably the most intense place that you're going to be. I'll be there. I've got a friend of mine coming. We're going to go really deep. We're creating a sacred container. As much as this is, you know, we have a lot of fun. This is a sacred retreat. We're in the vortexes. We're going to be using the earth's energy to heal ourselves. It's going to be unbelievable. When I say unbelievable, even I have chills on this. So it's going to be insane. And then, you know, there are people who want to learn to do what I do and channel the energy the same way that I do. So I'm actually starting a course in February, um, which is 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 really the healing mastery and it's going to take people on a journey where this is you know it, it's it's powerful and then one of the other things that we're going into later next year obviously i can't heal everybody and it might be their life contract to pass but what my next aim is is to go in into the, what i've called dying in the light and so therefore the dying in the light is where i'm going to help people transition beautifully so my <clears throat> My aim is is to trans to help people either heal or pass in a way that is just magical and beautiful. So that's what my aim. So that's what's coming up. Um, but people can go to my website, lisawilliams.com. I know my assistants just put some little links in into the chat. Yes. Um, but yeah, there's so many different ways that you can contact me. Um on social media, um, you're yep. under your name, but like uh um, Lisa Williams medium. So you're on all social media platforms for people who want to find you, um, and learn more about what's going on. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Anyway, you just Google Lisa Williams medium. You're fine. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot to choose from, whether it's books, yeah. whether yeah. it's cards, decks, yep. um, you yeah. always have something going on. Um, as we come to the end of the show, I always give the guests the last word, and that's like an inspiration or something that just comes off the cuff from the heart. What would you like to share with people and have them know? I want to share, Rini, that find what is within you. You know, what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you want to do? Really just ignore everybody else, okay? Sit in your own space. Sit in your own space that is in alignment for you. Breathe. If it's in alignment, do it. If it's going against the grain of what your family want you to do, your friends want you to do, all of this just really, really step into the space of being you. And I think that's what's important. So I'm actually always going to say, be you, do you find your own purpose in life and really step into alignment and just enjoy life. Just enjoy life. Mm -hmm. um, it's simple, but it's beautiful and powerful within yeah. that. Um, with that said, that's how we end the show. It's it's basically everybody, please go with love, luck, light, laughter, and don't forget to live. Thank you so much, Lisa, for being on with me Thank today. You. It's been a pleasure. It's always wonderful to see you smile and to see you here. Thank yes. you. Yes. It's been a right. pleasure. Everybody. It has been. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we will see you on Friday for the reading show. Um, with that said, Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.